this video, we're going to be going over space, how to attack it, how to create it, really just kind of how to think through your route combos and uh, how they can attack and create space in your offense. And uh, if you guys want to learn my entire offensive ebooks and schemes and all that stuff, that's going to be linked in the description at my Patreon page, patreon.com slash Cody Ballard for $10. You get access to all of my full offensive, defensive schemes, ebooks, all that stuff. Uh, I've got over 15 different ebooks throughout the course of the Madden 24 season and uh, really have updated a lot of them for you guys as we're getting kind of towards, you know, later in the year and uh, just kind of finalizing some things. But I wanted to go over something that I feel like is really, really underrated when we talk about offense and Madden and kind of my logic for for you guys, if you will. So in general, I'm going to do the show you this uh, defensively in general. There's really 10-ish spaces that you can attack in Madden every single year from every formation. And what you want in a, in a formation is you want to have routes that can attack all of those positions on the field, okay? So we're just going to work from left to, le left to right, kind of explain what I'm talking about. So the first area that we can attack is the hard flat here to the left side. So it's really from about zero to 10 yards and really it's outside the numbers. Okay. That's what I would consider that zone, that space. Okay. Now the next position that we can attack would be the, what I would call the intermediate flat. Now for perspective here, I'm going to put this vertical hook here. So you can see this is the cloud. Now we know that cloud flats will really typically drop between 10 and 30 yards back depending on zone drops and things like that so it's really from about 10 yards to 30 yards so if the ball is on the 20 it's really all of this space kind of right in here from about really from about 10 to 25 yards in terms of that intermediate flat area of the field and then we get into the deep sideline which is basically above 30 yards and really kind of where deep thirds deep quarters would play that okay so that is the left the left side, and, and really this, this grid essentially kind of plays the same. So if we take a look at the vertical hook, you can attack from what I, I call this the seam area of the field, but that's really from the hash marks to the numbers, and you can attack in that little grid from about 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and then, of course, you know, basically 20 and above or deep middle. Okay, so there's... There's three more zones, and, and I guess technically it'd probably be, you know, about 12, 15 if you're considering the deep, deep area as a bunch of different zones or if you're just saying it's all above 30 zones. But anyway, the right side's basically the same thing. So if I was in a hook curl, my hook curl's probably going to defend typically between, you know, in this example because we have hash marks, this is going to pretty much defend to the hash mark. But again, the vertical hook is kind of a better example and so you have 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and then, you know, deep. And then really what you have in the middle is kind of mid-read directly over the center. So that wouldn't be in the seam area. That would be in the real direct middle of the center, the center of the defense, uh, where the ball really is. And this same kind of thing, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, and then 20 and above. And really it's, it's really kind of like two zones to the left, two zones to the seam, two zones in the middle, two zones to the right seam. And then here we have hard flat on the right. We have cloud flat on the right. And then we have deep third on the right. Okay. And then what you could, you could very easily just say the deep area is just one entire, you know, big area or big space on the field. So the point of saying that and just kind of sharing that with you is so that you can understand there are specific spots that we're trying to attack. So I'm gonna draw up one of the best power plays in Madden, and then we're gonna talk about it. So if we take a look here, uh, I'm in corner strike. I'm gonna set up this passing concept. Now this is, in my opinion, it's known as a flood or sail concept. Pros call this a double corner uh, concept, but it's really, the double corner method is really designed to get to sail. So if you can just practically think through uh, the flood concept. I'll actually show it on this side first. It'll kind of provide us a little better opportunity to talk through some things. Okay, so if we look here to the left, what we've done is we've flooded the left side with three routes. Okay, we have a, a flat route. We have a streak or a deep route to the left. We have an intermediate corner, and then we have a flat to the tight end. Okay, 
Now backside, we can have a drag route and that drag route can really attack the seam area, basically the yellow zones, essentially from the numbers all the way across the middle of the field. Okay, so he's gonna attack under 10 yards in the seam, under 10 yards directly in the middle, under 10 yards directly in the left seam. That's kind of the idea, all right? So in general, we're attacking the left sideline. The main concept is to try to throw the ball to the left side of the field and really to try to throw this corner route right there, as you can see. Now, how do they combat? How, how would somebody guard that, right? How would somebody guard that? One of the ways that people will start to guard that is they will drop a cloud flat and a hard flat, and then they'll play cover two. This is known as double flatting. Um, it's also known as double mabling. And so the distribution of the zones is basically we're going to heavily distribute our zones to the left side. So as you can see here, now this throw, while I can still probably make it sometimes, it's a lot tighter of a throw. All right? It's a lot tighter of a throw. This is where we, we basically cannot attack that left sideline just yet. I'll come back to the left sideline in a minute. But now I want to kind of talk through our next deal. So from a power play perspective, if that's our main play that we run in this offense, is we're going to run that flood to the left-hand side on the short side of the field. This coverage that I just showed is very good for defending that. Now, obviously, we have to understand they could put some pressure behind this. But in general, this is kind of what a coverage would look like. So as we look at this zone grid and just kind of where the different zones are at, where are the holes in this coverage right here? The hole, the primary hole in the coverage is to the right side of the field. So this is where we utilize a cross concept to manipulate that. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use Durham. We're going to post the slot, drag the tight end, and streak the running back. Now what you'll see is the drag will be taken away, but this post will come open late in the play across the middle of the field. Okay, so now they have to defend that. So one of the ways that they're going to uh, defend that, one of the ways they're going to counter that or, or guard that is they are going to maybe set their zone drops. There, there's a couple things they can do, but really the main thing is they're going to have to user that post route on the tight end. So now they have to user, user the post route on the tight end. And again, this is assuming that we're on this hash. So here we are, and the tight end is just going to take that slot on the post. So now if we just look at the play art here for just a second, what's open? And again, this is assuming that this is their user. What's open here? Well, what's open is either the really deep sideline on the left above the cloud, if we can manipulate the half defender, or B, the delayed streak to the running back here. So again, if we go back to Durham, You'll see that hook curl, as I get screamed at, the hook curl is going to basically get pulled to the middle of the field by the post, and then that's going to be open. So again, in general, you can, you can kind of see how we're attacking different spots. We're not just attacking the same space. We're attacking different spaces. So like right here, we're attacking really this deeper seam above 10 yards, and then we're attacking the, the right side um, intermediate flat, the right side underneath flat. And then we also, in kind of a roundabout way, are attacking the underneath yellow area with the drag. And then what's really important here is we are attacking the left side seam area, all right? The left side flat immediately. And this is why this is one of the best plays because it attacks the most amount of space. Your route combos need to attack space. You have to attack the most amount of space possible because it means that they will have a difficulty in covering you. So as you can see here, that yellow zone kind of stays inside and I can throw the ball to the running back. Now, another great way to kind of counter the, the double flat coverage in general is to understand hash marks. So one of the most important things about hash marks, and this is why this has been one of the best concepts in Madden for the last year, uh, last couple years, is the double corner. Because if I throw a slot apprentice corner on the right side, if I can pull that deep half in the middle, then this, dub, this uh, deeper corner route will actually get over the top of the cloud because he has more space to run. So as you see right here, I'm able to get this over the top of that cover too. So then you might say, okay, now we're starting to kind of get into some of the, nut, nits, the nuts and bolts, the, the, the nit and gritty of the scheme. So now what are they going to do? Uh, what can they do 
really to counter what we just showed you? Well, one of the things they can do is they can go to this Cover 3 cloud. Uh, they can roll the safety over in an outside third to get him more outside to play that deep sideline, right? That's what they can do. So we're going to flat this guy. We're going to cloud this guy. And then typically, from what we've seen in almost every defense, this is where the user is going to be, right? So the user is now going to be put in a position where he's going to have to choose. Are you going to guard the running back, back to our counter play, or are you going to guard? So where's the space? You see the space is in that right side seam. So we take the space that they give us. So now let's just kind of play this out. And this is what you'll see a lot online. So now they go to that same exact defense. But this time they're like, okay, I'm tired of you throwing to the running back. I'm going to go user the running back myself, right? That's what they're going to do. So then what you're going to do is you're going to see that and you're going to go through your progression. So you look to the right, not there, running back, not there. But now the open space is this deep sideline on the left side. So you see how we're attacking a lot of different space with our route combos. That is so, so critical in Madden. It really, truly is. Another great example of this, and this is kind of getting into the schematics from a po the power counter constraint kind of format. Your power play is going to attack a specific some some specific spaces. So again, if we go back to our beginning, uh, our main example here, if we want to run this concept right here to the right, what are we attacking? We're attacking the intermediate flat. We're attacking the hard flat with the tight end flat route. We're attacking the deep zone with the with the streak, and then on the backside, we're attacking kind of the seam area underneath with that. So how do they defend that? They have to put multiple zones over here to the right side. So it would, for example, it'd be basically this defense right here, and that'll stop this corner route play, and it will also stop this corner route play right here pretty well. So then, okay, so those both of those plays attacked deep to the right side or, or many zones to the, to the right, right? So where are the holes in this specific coverage here? Well, the hole is to the left side, intermediate flat. And then if that pulls, let's say, let's say that they were to pull this guy and put him in a hard flat and double flat over here, which is very, very popular, okay, something like this. So now where's the hole if they were to disperse their zones, let's say more like this. Now, the main hole area of the field is going to be, there's only two defenders in the middle of the field, right? And one of them's deep. So then we would want to run a route combination that would manipulate that. So let me explain. This is where you start to get into some, some really nice and, and kind of interesting of your scheme. So one of the best ways to attack the left side, if we want to attack the left side quick, would be to motion this running back out and put him on a streak. So what can we do here? Well, we can run a, um, a route to the tight end, and then we can basically run a route combo kind of like this. And the reason this route combo is really effective is, again, we're basing it off of our power play. So we're going to put this defender on the right side in a ton of conflict because he has to go user this curl, but he also has to go user the C route on the left-hand side. So because of that, he's kind of stuck in no man's land, and we spaced out the route combos so well that he's going to have to stay over here nine times out of ten. So because of that, then what we're mainly looking at here is the C route. And as you can see, we can throw that C route. Now, a situation where we might not be able to throw the C route, and this is where we're kind of getting into what are the actual possible adjustments that somebody can realistically do, maybe they bracket the C route. So they take this defender and they cross man here, and maybe this guy's on a hard flat for the drag. You know, they kind of do some things to adjust to this. So then what we can do to kind of, again, continue to progress the reads is we can curl this guy on the right. We could either post the tight end if you wanted to do that or just keep him on a drag. And what will happen is as you look to the left side, you'll notice, oh, the tight end's wide open. Let me throw that and get some easy yardage against the defense. So as you can see, there's only a couple things, a couple real strategic things that they can do to take the C route away on the left side, which leads me to my next point. So now when they see you motion out the running back, that's going to give them a tell of, oh, he might be running this C route to the left side, right? 
So what we can do to kind of counter that is we're going to say, okay, so what would, be in a, what would be a coverage series that they would run to try to stop the C-run on the left side? A couple of basic things they could do, but really at the core, it's going to be basically one of these two things. It's either going to be this that you see on your screen, or it's going to be this that you see on your screen. So the point is you're going to have three defenders going this direction, right? So then what can we do? What do we understand about the coverage and how this is going to work? Well, then we could either A, have a big time concept that's going to come back on the right side and try to manipulate because let's say they get into because because again now they don't have a middle of the field player so they might need this guy in a third they might need this guy in a third and you're going to work them back into something like that right so this is where you can have the same look but do a couple different things so what we're going to do is we're going to do this combo right here to the right side and then on the left side now we're going to go with a flat and a drag route combo Right, so this is double corner. It's just now we're kind of bluffing the C route. So our first read here is now to the left side. Okay, we see a yellow zone, which means they're running cover three backside, and we can take advantage of that. So we look like we're maybe trying to target the left side space, but we're in the, from the same look, we're now able to attack the right side of the field. So what this ultimately is going to do, guys, is it's going to lead your opponent into basically a coverage that looks like this right here, okay? And and they're going to use her somebody. This is obviously is a drop eight coverage, right? So, you know, obviously they're going to put pressure behind this sometimes, and you have to understand that. And there's a little bit of elements to that, but really it's just making your reads. But in general, this would be the coverage that we're kind of walking them into because we've attacked the, the short sideline, the intermediate sideline, and the deep sideline on both sides of the field, and they can't tell when we're going to do that, they're going to go to a coverage that looks like this, okay? And then that means that the user is really going to be over here, and then there's only one yellow zone left, okay? That's really important because we can kind of, we can kind of scheme around this. So my favorite way to do that would be to go to the play Durham, and then now why would we call Durham? What does Durham accomplish for us? Why is it good? What Durham accomplishes for us is we are then going to be able to create some really cool routes. So the first thing we're able to do with Durham is we can put the slot on a slot post. We can motion the running back out and put him on a drag. Now what this is going to do is it's going to put the user in a significant amount of conflict. So again, if we've walked them into basically the coverage that you see on your screen and the user's here, right, the user's here, then the user is going to have to take the tight end up the seam. If the user does not take the tight end up the seam, then we can throw the tight end. So we're basically looking at the user, and we're saying, does he take the tight end or not? So the tight end is kind of our main read. Obviously, we're going to peak this flat route first, but then we're looking to the tight end. You see all that space that we've then created, and that tight end is able to kind of work up into the seam area of the field on the right. So now what I want to show is, again, a little bit more of an aggressive example of this, but something you will see is the user will then go take the tight end route. And oftentimes in this year's game, this guy will have some type of KO ability over the middle of the field, so you have to kind of be aware of that. So if the user climbs to go take the tight end, this is kind of the genius of this setup, in my opinion. So you look to the right, okay, that's taken away. Now we're looking to that drag, and you see that drag comes right underneath and really gets into that, that nice spot pretty well, pretty well to that right side, and you're able to manipulate that. Now, another underrated thing about the double Mabel coverage is kind of this next setup that I want to show you, which is to try to take advantage of the cover two aspect of the Mabel itself. So from a cover two drop eight coverage, this is about as good as you can get. So what I like to do is go to the play wide trail. I'm going to wheel the running back. You can put this guy on the right on the corner or leave it like it is. I really like to put the outside guy on the corner, but it's fine if you do it like this. The main read here is if we do get this cover two, what you'll see is this post will kind of split that cover two Mabel right up the middle of the field, okay, for a big play. So you notice how we went from attacking deep sideline, intermediate sideline, short sideline on one side to deep sideline, short sideline, intermediate sideline on another side to 
middle of the field, deep, middle of the field, intermediate, middle of the field, late. That is kind of the idea in terms of spacing your route combinations, attacking specific spaces on the field that are important. This is kind of the underrated importance of the play dagger because what dagger does is not only are you able to attack the sideline on the left side deep, but you're able to come back and attack this middle of the field really well as well. So you see how we're able to throw this crosser right here. So what's going to have to happen for them to defend that, especially, again, assuming that they're in a coverage that is really designed to defend, you know, the right side of the field. They're going to have to take their user out of the middle of the field and they're going to have to go guard him, right? That's, that's what they're going to have to do. So they're going to have to take the crossing route uh, across. So because they're going to have to do that, look at this tight end route. Look where he's at right in the middle of the field, and you see how we've attacked that middle space in the field when the user runs away from it. So that is the idea of spacing your route combinations, understanding where you are attacking and why you are attacking there, right? So back to the 30-yard cloud flat, for example, if we know that cover two is a big tendency of them, if we, if we know that one of the main tendencies that they have is that they're going to sit in this kind of double flatted cover two. That's kind of their main coverage. If we know this, then we can go to concepts that will attack it. Another concept that is really good for attacking this um, Mabel coverage is these deep corner routes that will get over the top of the 30 yard cloud, right? So we know that that's going to get over the top of that. So now all we need to do is we can do a lot with the running back. We could in route the running back. We could motion him out on a drag, motion him out on a wheel. But basically, this is the idea. So we're obviously looking at the flat first. We see, okay, double Mabel. And then you see how this deep corner route is able to manipulate that deep half over there on the right-hand side, right? So it's the idea that we're, you know, getting to different space, different with different route combinations as well. Like, for example, let me come back to this one that we talked about briefly. Another really good combo to me is basically this right here. I think this is a really underrated route combo this year because this C route is going to do such a good job uh, at attacking that outside third specifically, which then is going to open up a lot of space for your C route. So you're attacking left, deep, intermediate, sideline, right, intermediate, deep, sideline. And then you're attacking kind of the seam area of the field. So a great way to attack the seam area of the field is to use triangles. So the way that you use triangles to attack the seam area of the field is, and, and again, you got to remember, what's the seam area of the field specifically? Really, it's this right here. It's the vertical hook. It's the vertical hook on both sides. And then it's the mid read. This is kind of the main like strategy for attacking this because now they can't play double flat and have enough yellow zones, right? They're ultimately at the best case scenario, they're going to have one user in, in a yellow zone to, to guard you, right? So what you can do is, is you can use triangles. And the way you're going to use triangles uh, would be what I'm about to show you. So what you can do is you can use ghost routes, hitch routes, flat routes, things like that to really manipulate this. So the, the best way to do this would be to take your slot receiver and put him on a post route, put your tight end on a flat, put your outside bunch receiver on a hitch. Now, if you wanted to, you could invert that and run it this way. That's fine. If they're manning up specific people, that's an easy way to get around it. Another way to do it, you know, would be maybe something like this, for example. You could even, if you wanted to, you know, do it like this. That's fine. You're just trying to get to that same kind of mainstay, uh, mainstay concept. So again, we'll just do it like this for now. And then we're going to motion the running back out. Now, the purpose of this is so that we can have something that's sitting in the left side seam. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go or uh, hitch the running back and then if you wanted to, you could zig the solo receiver out there or you could leave him on that fade as a clear out. Now, the reason that I typically like to run it like this is because, again, the purpose of the play, if I'm calling this play, I am anticipating they don't have two vert hooks. So I'm anticipating 
that one of these hitches is going to be open. So if you think through the coverages that they could call, it typically is going to be hard flat here, deep flat here, deep zone here, and then this is going to be the user. And then, and then they might be able to get away with this on the back end here, but typically they won't have those coverage adjustments. Typically it means we're going to have another yellow zone. So anyways, the idea here is that the post would be the middle of the triangle, and then you would just simply take your hitches. As you see there, I had both hitches open in the pockets to be able to throw that. And the user ultimately is almost always going to go guard the post. Because if they don't go guard the post, let me show you what that would look like. So here I have the defense set up. And again, these guys are typically going to be in clouds um, or an outside third that would look like that, right? So because they're going to look like that, that means this guy's in a hook curl. Typically, this guy's going to be a user. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of simulate that they're going to go to this hitch on the left, okay? So they go to the hitch on the left, which means they leave that middle point of the triangle. So we can throw that right in that little window right there, right? So now they have to have a mid-read that's going to kind of roll back to the middle of the field. And we'll show you what that looks like. So again, now, you know, again, typically user's here. Mid-read's going to kind of roll back to the middle of the field. And then this is where this concept, I think, just becomes really valuable. But basically, now you see we're able to just step up and just take our running back. Again, this is all from having specific plays that attack specific parts of the field for specific reasons against specific defenses. Understand that there's really only about 10 to, I mean, if you really wanted to over-exaggerate, there's about 10 to 15 zones on the field, 10 to 15 spaces if you were to put a grid on the field where these zones can actually go. So you want to have combos that attack all of these zones, all right? Another really, I think, fun way to do this is to run into zones. And the reason I like to, to say that is because this is where I think this play right here is really good because your solo receiver is running all the way across. So he's going to attack the underneath left seam, the underneath middle seam, the underneath right seam, the underneath right hard flat, right? This guy on the right is going to attack the right hard flat, the right intermediate flat, and the deep sideline. This guy is going to attack the right seam, the right middle seam, the right deep seam. This guy on the right here, he's going to attack the middle seam. He's going to attack the left side middle seam all the way over to the left intermediate flat. This guy on the left is going to attack the left flat. He's going to attack the left intermediate flat, and he's going to attack the left deep sideline. So in this one play, we're attacking a significant amount of space because we're running our receivers into those spaces. So you see kind of how this play is going to go and how effective it can really be. And again, you, you want to have plays that complement one another, right? That is so important. So for example, if I'm going to audible over here to bunch tight end, what am I able to do from bunch tight end with this audible? I could go to a play like triple out where we're going to, if you look at the play art here, what are we attacking? Well, we're really attacking a, a potential of this defense right here. We're trying to say, if you run double Mabel, then your user's got to run 50 yards to the corner. If he doesn't run 50 yards to the corner, then this deep corner to Valdez Scantling is going to be wide open because it's attacking the super deep left sideline with a clear out streak for cover two. If it's cover three, cover four, this underneath corner will be open. And then assuming we have time, if they leave the middle of the field, then the running back's going to be wide open. So as you see here again, same kind of idea. They go with cover two. I get a bad pass lead, but you saw a circle was, was basically wide open, and I'll show it one more time for fun. So again, this is just manipulating a 30-yard cloud. How do they stop the deep corner? They play cover three, but what does cover three give up? The short corner. This wide double corner is, is really the best way to manipulate zone coverage this year, right? Because it's consistent to be able to attack cover three, cover four, cover two, as well as Mabel coverages. And so you're going to have to get into these roll coverages. 
that we were t- just touching on. The problem with the roll coverage is it's at the at the end of the day, it is a cover three coverage, and because it's a cover three coverage, that means that you're going to be able to attack with high lows on the sideline. Okay, so that's kind of how space works, how zones work, grid system of zones, all that stuff. But I think super important for understanding not only what play to call, but what where to put the routes on the field, why to put them there, and how to leverage them in your scheme. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to get my full offensive, defensive ebooks to become a better Madden player, the link to sign up for the Patreon is down in the description. Ten bucks will get you access to all of that. We go into deep detail about how not only to not only what to call, but why to call it, when to call it, and how to leverage it to be able to make it as effective as possible. If you want to sign up for the Patreon, head down to the description and click the link down below.